Hello, this is Catherine, and I know I need to stop talking. Hello, my loves, how are we all doing? I'm a day late recording this. It feels really weird to do it on like a, a Sunday lunchtime. There is good reason for this. I will explain why. But I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's had good weeks. I've had such a lovely week, and I hope I don't sound like a complete cock saying that. I'm not doing this to rub it in the face of anybody who's had a shit week, and I send you lots of love because, you know, goodness goodness me, haven't we all had a, a lot of shit weeks over the last last year, and how, however lo how long has this been, pandemic been going on, on now? I mean, it feels like fucking eons, decades, lifetimes. Anyway, so for those of you who've had a, I had a shit week, I'm, I'm sorry, and I, and I hope you take this in the spirit it's intended, which is completely not for me to go, haha, I've had a lovely week and you haven't. Um, I send you lots of love. I hope this week is, is going to be a, a better one for you but it has genuinely been been lovely and I, I'm definitely in that that Pollyanna phase of kind of like going it all of the little things that I so took for granted I took so much for granted I'm like oh my god this is amazing I can like leave my house with more than one person walking next to me or whatever the the, the rule of the week is it's um yeah I, I feel feel very lucky but I've had the had the week off work this week in line with with half term and, and I'm really lucky because I absolutely love my job but actually just to take an uninterrupted chunk of time off for, for the week has been has been genuinely really really lovely and I, I think when I recorded this last week I, I said to you didn't I that we were we were off to a very nice hotel for for the night with the children because that is the best way to celebrate 21 years together 21 years that's a long time isn't it so yeah mister I know I need to stop talking to myself for celebrating 21 years together and we decided the best way to do that would be to go on a romantic weekend away with our children. Yes, um, those of you who are thinking we've lost our minds, you may well be correct on that. But we went to a hotel that we we absolutely love. The hotel's called Bowood. It's in Wiltshire, I think. I mean, let's be honest, geography, not my strong point. Can I just recommend that you check that by by Googling or something? Because my, my, my geographical knowledge is, is not reliable, to say the very least. I spent a very, very long time when I was... I was going to say quite young, but I probably was not as young as I should have been to think this was the case. I thought Sweden was in Africa. Yeah. Yeah, geography, not, not, not my strong point. So I think it's in Wiltshire, but it's a lovely hotel. We've stayed there loads and I'm a colossal hotel snob, like a colossal hotel snob. In fact, my, my father-in-law was reminding me, we saw him this week, and he was reminding me of Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking's family are much better at the great outdoors than I am is probably the correct way of putting it. And, you know, for example, Mr. I know I need to stop talking, has been suggesting to me for, for a long time that we should go and stay in a caravan. And those of you who followed the blog for a long time will remember, once upon a time, I even gave in to requests from my children and my husband and we went camping. And everybody I've told about this camping trip tells me that it was not camping in so much as we slept in a bed and there was a, a kitchen thing. But I'm all I'm saying is I was under canvas and I had to go outside and walk through a field in order to have a wee. As far as I'm concerned, that's fucking camping, and I hated it. Pissed it down with rain the whole time. It was bloody miserable. But yeah, my, my father-in-law was reminding me that then they they are quite a fan. Mr. I know I need to stop talking to his parents and his sister. They often go and stay in yurts, which, I'm sorry, but a yurt is just another name for a fucking tent, right? Well, that's certainly what they look like. And so when they suggested that perhaps the whole family, we could all go off together and, and stay in a yurt, a.k.a. camp, I said that would be lovely. I will drive everybody there and we can all go and stay in yet and then I will book myself into a hotel nearby and I'll come and visit you because I just don't do the great outdoors well. But this particular hotel is is really lovely. It's beautiful. It's got lovely grounds. It's it's near like this Bowood House is a, is a place and a thing and I'm embarrassed to say that even though it's a massive thing and you can get free entry if you stay at the hotel in the many times we've stayed at this hotel we've never been such as our lack of lack of culture. That's a that's a terrible confession. But one of the really nice things is it's, the hotel's got loads of facilities on on site and it has a golf driving range and and like it's got a really posh golf course and I don't know about anybody else I'm very scared of golf courses because there's lots of rules on golf courses as I found out years and years ago when a friend of mine her her parents were very keen golfers and she said to me oh we'll go around with them and and we'll caddy and I rocked up at hers and I'm not exaggerating wearing a pair of heels that I think were about four inches high and she looked at me like what the fuck are these and I was like for golf and she was like 
no no you can't wear those and in fact you can't even wear stuff that you would think that you could probably wear like flip-flops there are very strict rules on golf courses consequently i've never been near a proper golf course in my life but at this hotel there's a little three hole golf course which when we checked in and and the lady said your room's not quite ready have you got plans i said we're going to go and and walk around the golf course for the people who are really rubbish at golf and she laughed her head off but basically that that is what it is so we went into the went into the golf driving range. Mr. I know I need to stop talking. He's very good at golf. The children really like golf. I am neither of those things, but I am nothing if not an enthusiastic trier. And so we we all went into the uh, we went into the little driving range thing. I mean, Beth's ten and she can hit a golf golf ball further than I can. To be honest, I think if I stood and placed a golf ball down in front of me. I would probably get it further. I actually broke the, the, the side of the wall in the driving range. That's probably not something I should confess to. I'm Not only am I shit at hitting a golf ball, I'm really shit at hitting it straight. So anybody who's ever been in a driving range will know that you kind of have like these little partitioned areas, presumably to stop you from taking out the other people on the driving range, which I absolutely would. Because when I hit a golf ball, instead of it going straight, it tends to go off at, at like an angle. And so actually part of the, the wooden wall, part of the, the covering fell off. I kind of put it back and like pretended that I'd never been there and then went, Jamie, how dare you do that? Because that's what all good parents do is use their children as a foil for for their own own disasters. So we went on the driving range and and like I say, Beth is Beth is is really good. I, I also, again, bad parenting moment. Jamie's very good, actually, he's getting very good at golf. And so for anybody who's never been, they have like things halfway up the driving range to encourage you to aim at them, I assume. And there were two kind of like mesh basket net things and full of confidence i said to jamie and beth i said oh if one of you two can get your ball into one of those those net things i'll give you each a hundred pounds you know where this is going right yeah jamie got it into the fucking basket hundred pounds each that was an expensive trip to the driving range wasn't it bloody hell but then after we'd been on the driving range we went out to the the golf course and we we paired up so it was mr i know i need to stop talking and beth versus versus myself and jamie and I just t- take great enjoyment in, in sort of noting how different those two sides of the, of the partnership are. I mean, firstly, obviously, Mr. I know he stop talking can actually play golf. I definitely can't. But so him and Beth, and Beth's obviously very competitive. And Mr. I know he stop talking is very good at golf. So they set off and they were like lining up. I've now learned it's not called kickoff. It's called a tee shot. Who knew? Look at me with my golf knowledge. God, I, this is like a golf podcast, isn't it? I bet you're all coming here for your expert golf knowledge. So they're, they're doing sensible, important stuff. Meanwhile, Jamie's speculating with me over whether actually we've already met aliens, but then they wiped our minds. And so we don't remember that we've met aliens, even though we have met aliens. And that, yeah, yeah, the fucks with your head fucks with my head too so we're we're kind of ambling ambling around the golf course and we did the first hole and we got all up to the little green bit which is the bit where you put the ball in the hole again i should be a golf commentator and we put our balls into the holes eventually and then mr i know i need to stop talking was like oh well done you two you you did really well and me and jamie looked at each other like what and he's like, yeah, well, you know, every time we turned round, you seem to be hitting the ball really well. And at that point, we confessed it had taken us 19, 19 shots, which, again, for those who, like me, don't know about golf, 19 is bad. One is good. It's not like football. And, you know, we were saying, well, if it's the World Cup, then, then we'd have done really well. But it was not the World Cup. But my favourite moment on the golf course, which I did write about on the blog at the time, came as Jamie and I were walking. I think it was the third hole. We're walking down and there's like a big pond lake thing on the course because, you know, hitting a fucking golf ball isn't difficult enough. Let's shove a fucking lake next to it as well. And I'm walking down with Jamie. He's, you know, 13-year-old boy, fairly, you know, composed and sort of, you know, not not prone to high degrees of emotion we're walking down the golf course jamie goes oh my god mum look at that massive lizard and because he's not prone to to you know sort of hysteria and shouting and we're next to a pond so i'm like oh my goodness maybe there is a big lizard i mean i don't think we have any big lizards but i kind of turned around expecting to see i don't know like a komodo dragon or something yeah i saw a fucking pheasant i said what he went there and he pointed at the pheasant i said that's not a fucking lizard it's a bird Oh, he went, well, it looked like a lizard. It doesn't look like a lizard, honestly. Possibly should go and get an eye test. Fucking lizard, for fuck's sake. Absolutely ridiculous. So yes, we did golf. And then the next excitement of the weekend is um, there's a pool at the hotel, which, you know, for lots of us, I guess, a long time since it's been swimming pools. And certainly for the kids, it's been a really long time since they've been swimming. So we dutifully followed the process and we booked to go into the pool. They did. It's all very well done, timed slots, etc. And you, and you kind of, you go in. 
I'm sure the people that we were sharing our time slots with were delighted in this really posh and, and predominantly, you know, it's kids are welcome there, but it's predominantly adults staying, really delighted as they kind of got in there and then suddenly heard Beth arrive. Can I jump into this pool? No, you bloody can't. Sit down. Shut up. But it's so long since we've been swimming, I kind of blanked from my mind, like some kind of PTSD, the five fucking years of Beth's swimming lessons. And it was only then sat by the by the pool because I didn't get in. I don't really like pool. I don't really like getting wet, to be honest, which is something of a flaw if, if, if one is, is planning to go swimming. And it was only sitting there that I kind of cast my mind back to those absolute fucking years, years, five fucking years of Beth attempting and failing miserably to, to learn to swim. Sitting there, Saturday morning, sweating out neat gin through your pores as your child walks across the fucking pool. I always remember confronting Beth and going, Beth, your feet are on the floor. She looked at me like I was an absolute fucking idiot and went, yeah, gravity, duh. So, so, so yeah, that was, that was nice. But fortuitously, the hotel pool is not deep, so therefore I could sit on the side and not even massively need to worry whether she could swim. Well, it turns out, I said to her, I said, oh, it's a shame you still can't swim. You won't be able to get the deep end. That wasn't the deep end, but, you know, that was my, my psychological play. I said, you won't be able to get the deep end. She went, I can swim. And then literally turned neatly and swam five lengths in quick succession. And I'm like, what the fuck? What, what, what are these mind games that you played with me to years? I mean, fucking hell. Swimming lessons are soul, soul destroying, soul destroying. I'm so glad. I found a, a, a thing on Time Hop this morning that told me that however many years ago, I was in the throes of potty training. Now, potty training is fucking awful, but I actually think swimming lessons might be worse. So yeah, she can swim now. Halle fucking Luya. It's only taken five years and I don't know about three million pounds and 99% of every fragment of my soul. So those of you who are still in in swimming lessons, I, I salute you. I salute you. We booked a, a suite to stay in, which makes it sound really grand and posh, but actually it's because I'm a bit tight and it's the most efficient way of, of paying for the four of us to go. So we're, we're happy. I mean, let's be honest, taking the two kids, it's not going to be a romantic weekend away, in for a penny, in for a pound. So put the two little beds up in the, um, in the suite. And I've got a great photo of Jamie just who just completely seamlessly slips into, into kind of the, the life I think he might have liked to have lived which is that of a Roman emperor as he's like reclining on his on his on his little put up bed in his white toweling robe that he's that he's nicked from Mr. I know I need to stop talking and I and he's he's saying now one of my children's great great pleasures in hotels is of course the fact you can ask room service to bring you a bucket of ice all the ice you could ever want so I sat there with his ice reclining on the bed he, he had a lovely a lovely time and then we went to dinner and they've got a lovely restaurant in the hotel really lovely restaurant i think they the, the staff were struggling slightly with with getting back to grips from you know i was gonna say a post-covid world but we're clearly not there yet but certainly a world which we can do normal stuff but still have to protect ourselves from covid so not a criticism of the hotel at all they, they were amazing but suffice to say we had to wait quite a long time for our for our for our food which Beth, you can imagine, her patience for that was on her lungs. She was like, where is the food and why are they not coming? And so in an attempt to to distract her, we, we went down a, oh, we went down memory lane chatting about children's television series over, over the years. And, and Jamie found himself, does anybody remember watching Abney and Teal? I think it was called The Adventures of Abney and Teal, which was a fairly average children's programme, as I recall. But it did have a talking turnip in it called Neep. I mean, if I heard about Neep once during the fucking dinner, I heard about Neep five fucking thousand times. It was constant. She remember Neep, and Neep did this, and Neep did that. And yeah, Jamie, Jamie had a lovely time. So I had Beth on one side, um, slightly livid that, that her food was taking longer than she would have liked. And then I had Jamie. I mean, he's just, he's Mr. Happy. He's like the greatest optimist I've ever known. He's sitting there, and it was it was a reasonably long way. And he's like, to be honest, Mum, this is perfect. Because when we sat down, I wasn't that hungry. And now I'm starving. And the food, when it came, was was absolutely beautiful. And I'd learned all kinds of random shit that Jamie had, had informed me of in, in various facts than I, than I ever wanted to know. Not to mention, I feel I can now write a dissertation on the life and times of Neep, Neep the Turnip. So yeah, that was that was it was a genuinely really 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 lovely stay. The weather was beautiful. We were very lucky. And then on the second day, they actually gave us a picnic to to have, which after a hotel breakfast. I mean, who doesn't love a hotel breakfast, right? We were all like, oh no, that's a bit much. So we so we brought it home, and it was beautiful and sunny. And we sat in the garden eating our picnic, and all was well until the cats decided to reward us by dragging out of the out of the bushes our welcome home present, which was a very large dead rat. Which they brought into the the middle of the middle of the garden, leaving it there twitching in its death throes, and um, yeah, and then buggered off the little fuckers. 
which then meant that in the middle of the night that night, I was woken by Mr. I knew and he stopped talking, getting out of bed, muttering something about cats. And I'm not very good in the middle of the night, so I, whatever he was banging on about, whether it was a remake of the of the Lloyd Webber musical, dear God, let's hope it's not another one of the films. I love a musical. I love an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, but the film of cats is an aberration. It is a terrible, terrible thing. But yeah, I, I woke up next morning and said, did you mention something about cats? He said, yeah, because obviously they left the fucking rat in the garden, hadn't they? So in the middle of the night, a fox rocks up in our back garden to, to come and come and join the dinner party. Little shits. Little shits. They really are. They really are. So yeah, so it's it's been a, a weekend, a week of nice things, really. We um, bet on a lot of a lot of football. I feel like I've driven to a lot of different football grounds. But highlight, highlight of the week without a shadow of a doubt. And the reason I'm recording this podcast today late is my daddy came down this weekend to, to stay. And he lives a couple of hours away from us. So I've seen him a few times over, over the last year and a half. But I have not hugged him since December 2019. And my dad gives the best hugs in the world. And on Friday, he arrived down and we just had the best hug in the world. And... It's one of the things, and I wrote a a blog post kind of obliquely linked to that this morning, which you you might have seen, which is the Winnie the Pooh one about when when Pooh and Christopher Robin are finally reunited and and able to hug again. And hugging is just something that I always took for granted. I always took for granted. When I hugged my dad, I can remember hugging him in December 2019 because we'd gone up to to stay with him. I remember hugging him goodbye. And of course, you know, you you always worry about the people you love and you always know there's, there's a chance that might be a while perhaps before you see them again but there was no not a single bit of me that thought it would be over a year and a half until I could hug him again and you know we've, we've all only got I guess a finite amount of time and it just it just has made me Covid has so much I need to make sure that I don't lose this Covid has so made me appreciate those little things those little things and god just the best hug in the world and oh it was amazing other stuff like he finally got to see beth play football for her her girls team he's my dad loves football he's probably the reason that i'm such a big football fan and she's played for that team for two seasons now which obviously covid has has fucked over left right and center but yeah he hadn't seen her play so he he came to came to watch her yesterday morning when when they went out for that it was the final game of the season obviously the fairy tale story ending to this would be like they went out it was an amazing game they played an amazing match and they won no they were shit they were fucking awful i don't know what had got into them yesterday they rocked up it was a team that they should have won against as well it was a younger team who were fantastic so full credit to them our lot looked like middle-aged men playing in some kind of pub league after a bit too many few too many beers at lunchtime they were like best like wandering around the pitch her hands on her hip she's like oh it's a bit hot she did score. She did score the opening goal and, and one of only two goals that they managed. So I'll credit it where credit's due. But but if I was hoping for an exhibition match of football, it definitely, definitely was was not that. So, yeah, we had a, a bit of a day of football and then we, we came back. And, and one of our lockdown purchases last year, as I'm sure it was for many people who are lucky enough to have a garden, was a, a massive fucking paddling pool, basically. People call them swimming pools. Call them what they are. It's a massive fucking paddling pool. And as I said earlier, I don't really like getting wet. So you might think, why the fuck have you bought a a massive pool? What I do like, though, is sitting in and being around water. And so in an inspired moment last year, Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking and I went onto the internet and bought two really nice, good quality pool lounges, like inflatable pool lounges. So I have now been able to enjoy my pool many times over without ever having to get wet because you just get onto the loungers I, I braved them fully clothed yesterday no one is more surprised than me that I managed to stay dry it was a miracle and so I introduced my dad to the joys of lying back on the lounger in the pool with a drink in your hand and then the rather random addition of some butter slime for anybody who is not acquainted with butter slime and neither was I until recently Beth decided that she wanted to buy some with her money so fine and I fucking, I mean, I hate any children's toy accessory thing that has the potential to be messy. It is the reason that I think up until quite recently, Jamie still thought this, you had to have a Play-Doh license in order to have Play-Doh at home. And that was the reason that we couldn't have any Play-Doh. And the children never had Play-Doh at home. They used to have to go to Nan and Grandad's if they want to play with Play-Doh. True story. That makes me sound like such an ass, but I fucking hate Play-Doh. So I was not particularly enamoured about this butter slime coming into the house, but actually... It's lovely. I don't know if anybody's tried it. It's like a kind of really nice hand massage for your hands. It's all smooth and silky and and lovely. So we lay on the lounges and and drank our drinks and played with butter slime. And and it was delightful. It was delightful. We had a barbecue because sunny day, what are you going to do? You're going to have to have a barbecue. So that was really nice. 
And then we, I've mentioned previously on here, I know that, that one of our, our lockdown purchases was we got a VR headset, virtual reality headset. So we, we introduced my dad to the joys of the virtual reality headset because he, he, like me, has, has always quite fancied climbing Everest. Unlike me, he has actually climbed some mountains, so this is slightly more, more of a possibility. Although, as, as, he, as he has admitted to, I think for both, both him and I are, are probably now, now past the point where we could, we could feasibly climb Everest. But with virtual reality, you don't need to. Put on your headset, there you are, at the top of Everest, and you haven't had to sleep in a single tent, which clearly for me is, is, is only a good thing. So yeah, that was a, that was a dream. Although the, the best moment is still, and again, I think I might have shared this on here before, we then played in the video of the time when we first got the VR headset, and David Attenborough does a lovely series of films for the VR headset, all about the insect kingdom. The twist being, on the VR headset, you are the same size and height as the insects and there's a again brilliant quality piece of parenting that I did where I secretly filmed Jamie as as Mr I know I need to stop talking and I cruelly tricked him into watching one with with scorpions and I must edit it down and find a way of putting it onto YouTube because it's the funniest fucking thing ever it's again Jamie usually so sanguine so composed screaming my balls my balls something's touched my balls with this headset on oh, it's very 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 funny so it was perfect. It's been a perfect week. It's been a perfect weekend. I feel unbelievably lucky. I really do. And not taking any of that for granted. Really not for a, sing for a single moment. Um, and I will be reminding myself of that when I come back down to Earth with a Bump when we're back to school tomorrow. Jamie claims he's got an inset day tomorrow. I can't find any evidence of this anyway. So I'm either going to be the mum who rocks up on the inset day with a child who's not supposed to be in school or I'm going to be the mum who gets the phone call from school to go, where the fuck's your child? And they're like, oh, do they not have an inset day? No, they don't. So probably need to find that out. Both are claiming they've had no homework at all over half term. That doesn't seem likely, does it? Doesn't seem likely. So I'm going to have to explore that. No fucking idea where the PE kits are. Standard. I think I did at least wash Beth's. Jamie's, I, I just, he's at the age now where I just think, do you know what? If you want to go into PE wearing something that smells of feet, on your head be it really so we, we we need to find that i mean it's it's probably still better than when he when he was very young my greatest parenting moments of all was the night before back to school i think it was the end of the summer holidays and i was like fuck where's the pee bag where's the pee bag searching around found the pee bag opened it to check everything was in there and found a cork and a foil cage from a bottle of champagne in there yay parent of the year that's me thank fuck i found that before he got that to school that would have taken taken quite some explaining so I hope everybody's keeping keeping safe and well. I, I hope you've had lovely times. I hope if you haven't yet got to hug the people that you love, that you get to do that really, really soon. And if you haven't got anybody to to hug you right now and, and are in need of a hug, then I'm sending you a, a massive, massive virtual hug. It, it definitely feels like one step forward, two steps, two steps back at the minute. But but we will get there. We will keep on keeping on. As Jamie would say, it is what it is. And it is indeed what it is, which is what I will be reminding myself tomorrow morning as I'm losing my shit, running around the house, searching for pee bags and wine corks and screaming, teeth, hair, shoes. Have a brilliant back to school. Have a lovely rest of Sunday. Look after yourselves, my loves. I will speak to you next week. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.